Now these other ones here that are just now waking up from dormancy, I'm really taking them out here to inspect them, really evaluate them well because we may need to do some pruning. Now these trees have a number of different purposes. Now I could either sell them, which is really my main intention to sell most of them. Um, I could also use a lot of them for rootstock, which is also my intention and graft a better variety on top of it. Or I could also do the same thing that I was planning with some of these smaller trees that we just rooted is actually to put them into a larger five gallon size pot and have them grow all season. So those are the three main purposes there. But if we're gonna sell them or if we're gonna use them as rootstock, maybe we can use them as rootstock now, or maybe we have to wait until we can use them as rootstock next year. Because I don't wanna sell something that's not healthy, that's not gonna really go, uh, grow away for somebody when they get it. I also don't wanna use something as rootstock if it's not healthy. So as I've said to you guys a lot before with these younger trees that we're trying to get established, it's really, really critical to make sure that this wood is healthy from the beginning. If this wood isn't healthy, it's gonna set your tree up for kind of failure going forward. It's a really big reason why a lot of times when our trees are cut back to nothing and then they re-sprout from the base, maybe they're either cut back or the cold kills them, they re-sprout and they're so vigorous and they're so healthy and they look and perform so much better. So getting us a really healthy base is the, is the name of the game. That's really the number one thing we need to pay attention to. So even if I have a tree like this that has rooted itself out in this pot for the entire season, it was in here, and it should be established. If it's not healthy, I'm gonna rejuvenation prune it and cut it back to healthy wood because I wanna have a healthy base going forward. That's really, really key and critical. Rather than fighting the fig mosaic virus, if we do this rejuvenation pruning now and set it up for success, we're gonna have a lot healthier of a tree we're not gonna even have to feed it as often or as much. So that's really critical right there of a super important part that we're gonna, we're gonna do right now. So I'm gonna look at some trees, evaluate, well, which of these can I use for rootstock? Which of these can I sell? Um, you name it. So I have a whole bin here of rootstock. This one here is called raspberry latte. I'll make sure I wanna <clears throat> keep them uh, appropriately labeled. This one's raspberry latte. So I know that this tree right here is gonna be used as rootstock. First off, it's an extremely vigorous rootstock. That's very critical for the success of this tree. You could also see here that it's very, very healthy. It has a very healthy base to it. I'm gonna zoom in, set this up for you guys. So the way I can tell that this is healthy is that there's not a whole lot of, first off, there's no dead wood. If there is dead wood, you can just break that off as I just did. But this growth here that you guys are looking at, it's got good node spacing. It looks really healthy. There's no damage to it that I can tell. It doesn't look gnarled in any way as some fig tree, the wood on fig trees can appear all the way from top to bottom, it looks healthy. I also know, by the way, here's a surefire way to know that your tree is healthy, is if it was healthy last season. If it was growing well last season without minim you know, minimal effort, then you know it's really healthy. Now a tree that's not healthy, very clearly, is this guy right here. Look at the difference between the two. Now, obviously there's a difference in height, but that's not really what I'm paying attention to. Look how many nodes there are on this tree. It's insane. It's just too, too many nodes, too much gnarled going on. The wood doesn't look very healthy. It also looks a bit older than it probably should. So what we're gonna do, very simply, is I'm gonna rejuvenation prune it. And I'm gonna come in here to quite a low point on the tree and make my cut. 
Now, <clears throat> when you do this on an unhealthy tree and you just make a cut like this, there is a chance you could lose your tree. However, very unlikely. In fact, we really want to cut it quite low because what we're really trying to do is get it to branch out from a lower node that is healthy, that doesn't have fig mosaic virus, or we're trying to get it to actually put up a sucker from the roots. A sucker would be the best scenario possible, but that tree has now set itself up. I've set it up for success going forward. If we can get ourselves healthy growth from one of these nodes, we can call this tree a success. It's now healthy. In fact, if it were to put out a healthy node and let's say two months from now, it has some pretty good growth to it that is healthy, I can then sell it. I can then confidently say that is a healthy tree. I like the growth. It doesn't show too much fig mosaic virus to it. The growth is also growing vigorously and well then I can definitively say that when I send this to somebody, they're gonna be very happy to receive this tree because it's gonna do really good things for them going forward. Now this rootstock here is perfect. This raspberry latte rootstock. I'm just gonna make a cut probably somewhere down here. I don't know. Make my graft and call it a day. And that's really it. Now, if indeed, the raspberry latte was a lot similar to the Borges Soak Grease tree here that we just cut. I would have to make the same cut, let it grow for an entire season, and then wait for it to go through dormancy once again to then wake up in the spring to then graft onto it. Otherwise, that's just a really bad rootstock and I shouldn't use it. Because if it was gnarled like all this wood here, this would just not set me, set me up for success in the future. This is just a bad base. So it is what it is. But, you know, sometimes you, you, these trees might be a little bit longer, take a bit longer to establish. But in the end, if you do it right, you're going to see good success. Now, I would also mention that I would say there's a good chance by making this cut here, we're going to see some really healthy growth on this tree. I know it's well-rooted. It's been in this pot for, I think, two years now. Here's another tree. <clears throat> As you can see right here, this branch is actually good and healthy, whereas this one here is not. So I'm going to make a cut right there and take out this unhealthy wood and leave this healthy stuff. This is another one that's been in a pot for a long time. Need a rejuvenation prune this all the way down here. This Grease de St. Jean tree. This here looks very healthy, rooted out really well. We should take off the parafilm. You can see there is some tight node spacing right in here, but the rest of this is very healthy, very vigorous, so that's good enough for me. Same thing with this tree down here. Usually down below, you might see some tighter node spacing, but as soon as you get to see this really good node spacing, very healthy growth, you should be good. This one is debatable as to whether or not I should cut it. We're all trying to get a healthy tree. So um, I would just be patient, you know? I think you guys unfortunately want things now, but this is something that takes time because of the fig mosaic virus, because of just the nature of the fig tree. 